Welcome to today's 3D print. Let's talk about the moon. Stay tuned. You're going to like this. Alrighty, a year ago I printed the moon. I printed this on my Ender 2. I tried to print it as one piece and I had an issue. Cooling on the bottom didn't work so well. <laughs> Very detailed. You can see. Um, this is from, uh, I believe this one was from somebody else, but now I have it from uh, Moon on Our Nation on Thingiverse. The link is down below for the model. And they use actual bump map data, actual scan data of the actual moon to generate this model. So he can generate higher and higher resolution models the larger you go. His largest resolution file that he can't even slice himself <laughs> is a 10 gigabyte STL. <laughs> So I'm going to try to slice one for a special project. But anyway, my solution to this was to simply print it in two parts. So I made a two-piece print of the moon. So there's a seam in the middle because it's two hemispheres. And this has an interesting property because I did something cool with this. So I'm going to have to turn the lights out for this. Let the camera adjust. You ready for this? My moon lights up. <laughs> and you can light it up in three different colors. So you can do a warm white, you can do a cold white, and you can do a mix of both colors. The mix is the dimmest and also, in my opinion, the most accurate of how the moon actually looks. It's got that grayish color that the moon has. I believe this is Atomic Filament's Hot White. I want to say Atomic's Hot White. I think that's who makes this. Uh, but there is my moon. This is, I believe, also printed on the Ender 2. And print it in two halves. And I just use hot glue to glue them together. And in the bottom there is a little module. So there's a little thing inside there with a battery pack. That's the socket to plug it in to charge it. And it's also a touch sensor. So you touch it and you can go through the modes. But of course, you know me. <laughs> that is so not enough. Lighten up my cat. <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah. I made a 400 millimeter moon. <laughs> That's no moon, that's a space... No. It's a moon. <laughs> Here's the bicolor mode. It gives you that nice moon-like color. I had a little bit of a layer shift up top there. This is printed on the S4, the CR10 S4. And this thing is absolutely massive. <laughs> it is so freaking massive. every crater is on here so what I wanted was a higher resolution model of this so that I can make this thing even bigger and make it justify that big size and the hundreds of hours it's going to take me to print a 500 millimeter version of this <laughs> that means 25 percent larger than already this thing is um, with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. I'm going to try to do it single wall. I don't know if that's going to work. It's probably going to take two walls. That'll give me a 2.4 millimeter um, pitch. I believe this was six, which is 2.4 millimeters. So I might even need to do three walls in order to have enough sacrificial internal layers to be able to complete the top without it failing. So, um, um, two perimeters at 1.2 millimeter would be the same as this. This is six perimeters and there was some failing inside intentionally, sacrificial perimeters in order to make sure the outer perimeter succeeded. And um, so if I'm going to make it 25% larger, I'm going to need 25% more perimeters. So I think um, um, 3.6 millimeter thickness should do it. So three perimeters with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle, I believe might do it. 
I wish there was a way I could start off with zero or one perimeter because I could probably get up to about I would guess I can get up to about here in this range before I needed to switch to more perimeters the problem is there's no way to add more perimeters because there'd be nothing to hold it there'd be no support for it I mean sometimes a slicer will add that little d -d 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 lip on the outside and it might work especially if I go two then let it go a couple layers then go three but the problem is then my illumination will be inconsistent so this part of the moon will be brighter than this part than this part because it'll be thicker so better to have just three throughout but that's going to take a lot of filament I wouldn't be surprised if it takes a roll or two per half I also have an idea to do this instead of in two equal halves which gives you two hemispheres but that puts that ugly seam right there instead I believe based on the failure of that model I can start to print right around here and print two-thirds or maybe even three-quarters of the moon in one go and then just print the bottom cap as a separate piece so I could just put the bottom cap on and the seam will be down here where it's less visible especially if you just tilt the moon a little bit and you won't even be able to see the seam when you're watching it and looking at it so I think I will actually attempt to do that but I'll do it on a smaller scale first and see how much I can get away with but yeah that's freaking cool and it's cheap this little module and you can see it was big enough to light this whole thing up that little module is 10 bucks on Amazon Prime shipped hello <laughs> they sent me one and I was like that's so damn cheap that I bought a second one to put in this one <laughs> so this is a HE3D they're selling stuff on Amazon they have a couple of printers but they also have little things like this and I was like, hell yeah, ten dollars. I mean, it's like, I think it's like eight ninety nine if you buy it from China. So it's basically the same price and you get it prime shipped, which I think was pretty awesome. So um, link for the moon file is down below, and link for the little light up widget is down below. And it's pretty neat. It has a little battery built into it. It'll run for an, like I don't know half hour, hour. I don't know how long it'll run. I never actually tested it, but um, you just touch and it lights up. First is warm white. Second is cold white third is both lights a little bit dimmer and then again is off and then you just plug it in to um, um charge it up off the usb port so what i did was i just put a hole in the bottom of this the size of the opening and then hot glued it in from the inside i kind of wish it stuck out a little more and had a nut so you can just you know push it through nut it on and you're done but although this is cleaner it would just be easier if i could nut it on but um I'm happy. It just took a little hot glue and it's you near know, solid. And I'm very, very pleased with that. And now I want to try. I don't know how long it'll take me. It might take me a month, two months. Depends on when I get the 1.2 million nozzle on the CR10S5. I got to get enough of the all the same color filament. I'm probably going to use eSun's PLA Pro because I want it to be stronger. And I like the warm white eSun PLA Pro. I'll have to do two samples in the cold white and the warm white and see which looks better with the light inside because the light will interact with the color of the plastic and go from there so you guys have a great night and remember sometimes it's not a space station a fully operational battle station sometimes it really is just a moon so see you later